Fossil fuel power plant electricians routinely cut various sizes of wires and cable throughout a facility, often several times a day. Two cutting tools have been traditionally used, a long-handled cutter weighing about 9 pounds or 4 kilograms, and a ratchet cutter weighing about 4 pounds or 1.8 kilograms. Both tools are strenuous to use and can lead to disabling upper extremity musculoskeletal disorders, or MSDs. The long-handled tool is typically used in one of four ways, placing one handle of the tool against the chest and pulling the free handle back, placing one handle of the tool on the floor and pushing the free handle down, placing one handle under the arm and pulling the free handle inward, or with both handles in front of the worker pushing the two together. Note, only 50% of males from the general population have the upper body strength to cut heavy cable using a long-handled tool. These four techniques all have various risk factors for MSDs. 1. Forceful pulling with arms and shoulders. 2. Forceful grip exertions with forearm twisting and bent wrist motions. 3. Awkward bending or twisting of the trunk. And 4 forceful downward exertions with elevated shoulders. The ratchet cutter also has risk factors for MSDs. One, repetitive twisting of the forearm. And two, forceful grip exertions and repetitive bending of the wrist. With the goal of mitigating these risks, extensive ergonomic testing was conducted on these two standard and two alternative tools, a hydraulic and a gear-driven battery-powered wire cutter. Both tools weigh about 10 pounds, or 4.5 kilograms. However, both are easily operated with one hand, with the forearm and wrist in a straight, ergonomically correct position. Compared to standard cutting tools, the data shows that a battery-powered cutter substantially reduces muscle exertion, as measured by maximal voluntary contractions, or MVCs, which is an indication of the magnitude of muscle force required to complete a task. This chart indicates the force exerted by the deltoid, or top of the shoulder, muscles. The data shows a similar reduction in force by muscles in the upper back, specifically the latissimus dorsi muscles. A side-by-side -side comparison of available tools demonstrates the findings. Note the strain on the elevated upper shoulders and back and the angle of the wrists using the long-handled tool. Compare this to the angle of the wrist using the battery-powered tool. Further, the cable itself can hold the weight of the tool, virtually eliminating strain on the shoulders. Note the angle of the wrist and forearm twist when using the ratchet tool and the strain on the shoulders from prolonged elevation. Alternatively, when using a battery-powered cutter, the forearm and wrist are in a safe, neutral position. Finally, this graph shows the impact of the three types of cutters on the lower back, specifically the dominant erector spinae muscles. Note the deep angle of the back and the force required by the back muscles when pushing down on a long-handled cutter. Similarly, note the prolonged strain on the back when bending to use the ratchet cutter over the lengthy time it takes to cut heavy cable. Alternatively, the battery-powered cutter can simply be placed on the ground, with the electrician letting the tool do the work. In summary, a battery-powered cutter will 1. significantly reduce shoulder and arm muscle fatigue, which can lead to MSDs. Two, reduce awkward postures of the arms and trunk, which can also lead to MSDs. And three, provide these benefits cost-effectively. By significantly reducing workforce injury from MSDs, the payback period for purchasing a battery-powered cutter compared to the long-handled cutter is estimated to be one year or less.